wanted to welcome you to Holy Trinity and number one say surprise uh, Pat and I are here today to co-facilitate worship services Pastor Alicia and Pastor Ben are enjoying a well-deserved time of uh, vacation and a little bit of break before the new year so again my name is Carla Klingfuss all of you I'm sure know Pat Rimford um, today we're going to be talking about the Gospel of Mark and talking about um, Jesus's life as an adult his baptism his ministry and so forth and as we go into the church service today, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes doing some announcements with you. We are ending our Looking Inward huddle today, and then next week we're moving to our Outward huddle, the third part of our, of our um, vision process. And we'd like to invite you, if you haven't already signed up, uh, to join us next Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. We're going to have Bishop Ann here and some other hosts, uh, guests that will be speaking to us. We also have free meal, which is always wonderful. And um, right before the service, Pat and I were talking, and I said, oh yeah, I signed up. And I looked at the list, and here my name wasn't on the list. So if you haven't already, please stop at the bulletin board by the office and put your name down, and we hope that you can join us. The other good news that I wanted to share with you is that we recently had a um, plan around $25,000 worth of money that we wanted to raise for our youth and family ministry. And I'm happy to say that we met that goal. So thank you, everyone. We also have our uh, matching dollars from our donors. So uh, wonderful, gracious, thank you to them as well. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Heavenly Father, when Jesus was baptized by John in the wilderness, he claimed him as your son. Claim us as your children. Amen. 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 
You may even now be seated for special music by Mandy. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He pro proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. 
He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he, and he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Good morning. I am really honored to be here with you in worship today and spend some time together. You might be wondering why it is that I'm giving the sermon today. Well, I once worked for a woman years ago who, whenever there was a task that maybe people wouldn't necessarily raise their hand immediately to volunteer for, or perhaps it was challenging, she would come to us and say, I have an opportunity for you to succeed. <laughs> I quickly learned, <laughs> but nonetheless, I would always take on the challenge. As a married woman with my husband, sometimes I try to use that on him, and I say to him, Tom, I have an opportunity for you to succeed. <laughs> he caught on even quicker and frequently says, I'd love to fail miserably. <clears throat> so that brings me to an executive council probably meeting probably about six to eight weeks ago. Imagine, if you will, and this is my story, so the recall might be a little different from Dirk's or others, but imagine, if you will, we're in the warm office of Pastor Alicia. There's four of us from council sitting around the table with Pastor Alicia and Ben, and she's walking through kind of the events of what's left to accomplish through the end of the year. And she mentions that her and Ben are taking a vacation um, the last Sunday in, in December, and they're brainstorming about who they should call from pulpit supply. Do they have someone internal that they could work through? And as I'm lulled by the warmth of the room, she suddenly says, and at the same time as we were brainstorming, we said, Carla. You can imagine that took me out of the lull of my warmth. But yet in the back of my head, I heard uh, I have the opportunity to succeed. So here I am. <laughs> so Pastor Ben offered to me in support of preparation of the sermon today that he'd be willing to meet with me to prepare me. So he said, before we meet, I'd like you to read Mark, cha um, Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. And when we meet, I want you to share your impressions with me. So the night before our meeting, I sat down in the living room, I read through the scripture, I got done, I closed the book, and I sighed. And Tom said, so, what did you get out of it? And I said, I'm, I'm not sure. And so he said, what? Give it to me. Let me read it. So he read it, and as he was done, he closed the book, he looked at me, and he was a little misty-eyed, and he said, Jesus was baptized in the River of Jordan, and he called his first disciples. And I did read that, but in the moment, reading the Bible is a little challenging for me. I love to read, and as I started to reflect on the Bible and thinking about preparing for today, I thought about how the Bible sometimes overwhelmed me for me. Um, as I listen to others talk about the Bible or be able to quote scripture, it's wonderful. But sometimes it makes me feel a little bit inadequate. <clears throat> Tom and I recently attended a church service at my home church in Farmington. And uh, the pastor, the service that week was on, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so. And he asked us to really think about who, who did tell you that, the, that Jesus loves you? Was it the Bible? Was it someone else in your life? And he asked us to reflect. And as I thought about it, I started to think about my mom, who was a critical part of my raising in faith. She took me to church, made me attend Sunday school, gave me the opportunity to succeed, and also um, volunteered at church herself. So she set an example. My grandmother was an instrumental part as well. She was someone also who had a strong faith. She volunteered at her church. Uh, she loved her some Billy Graham and the Guidepost periodical magazine. And she frequently, whenever we had milestones and she gave us gifts of cards or things, she always wrote scripture in the cards in her milestone moments. 
My faith formation at Farmington Lutheran was also important. There were people that weren't my parents. They were the Sunday school teachers, the ministers, the support staff, everyone that was around there and cared, encouraging and supportive. But again, as I was reflecting on that question that the pastor asked, I had to think about the Bible. And I was thinking, did the Bible really um, play a strong role in my faith formation? And yes, there were Sunday school lessons that were based on the Bible. There were sermons that were based on the Bible. But again, I had not spent a lot of time reading the Bible and reflecting on the Word. So it made me further think about how we all learn differently. I myself, I like to listen to people read the scripture. So when Lori speaks or someone else reads it, I'm truly listening to what they're saying. I'm not necessarily reading the words, but truly listening and letting it soak in. So then I thought about how am I going to prepare for this sermon? And I phoned a friend. <laughs> I called someone who is a lifelong friend and what I call a spiritual sister and asked her if she had a study Bible. And she came through. So we're going to put it to the test now. So as we reflect on the reading from today, Isaiah uh, wrote about the coming of Jesus in the Old Testament and wrote that John the Baptist would be the one to announce his coming. Mark is a relatively short book in the Bible and doesn't really necessarily focus on Jesus' birth, but his adult life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. And Mark starts with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And when you think about that for us as believers, that's an awesome story to hear. It's part of our larger story as Christians. In our reading of Mark today, it references that John the Baptist was wearing clothing that was of camel's hair and a belt made of leather. And this is an important, an important part of the description of the story because John was resembling prophet Elijah. And it set him apart from religious leaders who took pride in wearing long flowing robes who wanted to present themselves as someone to be admired. As we find on early in Mark, John the Baptist, when he performed baptisms, he did it for individuals that were giving up a selfish way of life and who wanted to repent and turn towards God. He also references in Mark that he's not worthy of Jesus and that although he baptized people with water, Jesus would baptize people with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> in verse 7 through 8, he says, and this was his message, After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. When you think about John the Baptist calling the people of the Judean countryside, the citizens of Jerusalem, to the water again to baptize for the repentance of sins, one may think about Jesus, who is without sin. Why would he bring Jesus to the water and baptize him in the River of Jordan? And it really was to, become, to begin Jesus' message as the Messiah and to set that framework to identify with our humanness and our sin. He really did come to be amongst us. Imagine then as Jesus came out of the water and the heavens were torn apart and a voice said to him with you, I am well pleased. Yet immediately the spirit sent him into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by Satan. He was tested. And although in the story of Mark, we don't necessarily hear the particulars about the tests, um, he did use God's word to face down those temptations. And we'll hear more about that later in the Bible. So in the temptations Jesus, Jesus faced, he used God's words against Satan, and we can do the same. Temptation is all around us, and we're frequently faced with it. We can learn about ourselves, we can strengthen our character through these tests. Does Satan himself come to test us? Not necessarily, but it's people and it's things that tempt us and test our resolve. And as I mentioned earlier, Jesus' baptism in the midst of all the people of Jerusalem and Judea was partially to identify with our humanness. The same can be said of his temptation in the desert. It serves as an example to us today of how to survive temptation and how Jesus can be of assistance and support when we are tempted. So after his time in the desert, Jesus went to Galilee and he proclaimed the good news of the Lord. What he said represented hope for those that were afflicted and were downtrodden, and he sent the message that the kingdom of God is near. 
He then began gathering his disciples. He gathered Simon and Andrew, who were brothers, James and John, who were brothers as well. And if you recall from our reading, he found them at the Sea of Galilee. They were fishermen. And he said, come with me, I will make you fishers of men. And they followed him. The really interesting part of the story for me around this is that I learned in my studies that they had to grow in their faith. When I read this, I thought, did they follow him in what we call blind faith, and they just trusted their instinct, or did they falter? And again, although we didn't read it, I learned in my study Bible that they did falter, and later were called again. And it made me think again about what forms my faith. And it takes me back to that um, uh, visit that I made to my home church in that foundational aspect of my faith. Again, my mother, my grandmother were critical components. And when I think about that, I followed them, maybe blindly, but I eventually came to believe. There were times that I also faltered. As a young adult, when I left for college, I did, I think, what many people did in my generation. You enjoy college, you don't go to Sunday service, you maybe go at Christmas, Easter, <laughs> those types of holidays. But eventually, at some point, <clears throat> I came back, and I actively returned to my faith. And I must tell you, after spending time with the, body, the, the study Bible this last um, couple of weeks, I do feel more well-informed. I'm going to be joining a Bible study group that you may have heard of that we're going to have here at the church in the new year. And I feel like I can break it down into manageable pieces. And hopefully through that, my faith will continue to grow. I'll falter less. And it makes me reflect one more time on that question that Pastor Kevin asked at Farmington Lutheran Church a few weeks ago. He said, who told you that Jesus loves you? And I can tell you that my mom did, my grandma did. But I can also tell you that now I remember that the Bible tells me so. Thank you.
on our way today, we should be comforted in knowing that Jesus goes with us. May he go before us to show us the way, behind us to encourage us, beside us to befriend us, above us watching over us, and within us to give us peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sing. serve the Lord.